This is a fly rod. And this is our backyard pond. We're about to do a little experiment and see if a bluegill prefers a dry fly or a wet fly. I got my young son here. He found this at the beach. It's some anchovy scent. So while we're doing our experiment, he's gonna be testing in the background if scent helps his dry fly. I've also got my older son, Abel, the cameraman. Yep. He's also gonna be editing this video. So if it's not done perfectly, blame him. And we're gonna go start with the dry fly. We're gonna fish our way around the pond. There's not really any time to this. We're just gonna fish our way around and make our decision on what works better, a dry fly or a wet fly. Now a dry fly mimics uh, like a bug, like a mosquito landing on top of the water and a wet fly man, uh, mimics like a nymph underwater. Uh, blue, bluegill is a pond fish. They're warm water fish, so they really get active in the summer. This is our backyard pond and we're gonna go fish our way around it. All right, there is our tiny little dry fly. And just to put it into perspective, there it is on my finger, tiny. But that's what these little bluegill are feeding on in these ponds and they can be so fun to catch. And uh, normally people are catching them on worms and bait, but today we're gonna try something different that might just spice up the fun a little bit. We're not sure. We're gonna go uh, with a fly rod. Now this is a little trick I learned. You can throw Vaseline on a, um, on a dry fly and it'll float better. They make fly fishing um, gel to make them float, but it's a lot more expensive. There's really no need to do that. So my brother found this at the beach. Um, I was at my dad. <clears throat> I have two dads, so. And then there's that. Um, it's supposed to scent like anchovies, so. We have that. And here's our pond. Yeah, big goat. Uh, we do a lot on our property. If we can't catch one on a fly rod, we've now doomed ourselves to forever fishing and you forever to be fishing with bait. But if we can change the game and get you fly fishing for panfish, so much more action when we're fly fishing. So let's get this rod out there. Let's get the pole in the water, see if this can change the game of bluegill fishing. This time of day in this hot weather, they like sitting up in the shade. So we're gonna see if we can attract any fish here. What I'm gonna try to do is work up right in this zone in here. I see some fish. Let's see if we can get a taker. Nope, that's not where I wanted to go. Cujo just opened the gate. <coughs> All right, watch this. I think we're going to get a bite here. Oh, you see that? We just had a hit. Dude, it works. It freaking works. Let's see if we can get another bite. Oh, did you see that? Did you see that? He got one almost. He took it. <laughs> we can crop in there too. They might be able to see some of this. We got one. Oh, dude, I just yanked, yeeted him. <laughs> Bro, oh, yeeted oh. him. Dude, dry fly already smoked one. Got one. So we just hooked our first bluegill on a dry fly. My son's already out fishing me. He got two. Let that guy go. River's up to two. You got another? No, I got one. Oh, he got one. Here we go. Let's flip back out here into the zone. This, they love hiding under these trees in this time of day because it's so hot. Oh, we already got a taker. There we go. He got another one. Second cast, second fish. Oh yeah, here we go. Fish coming in. Oh man, that's a good one there. Under the mouth on that dry fly. What a fun way to catch fish. Clearly, fly fishing for bluegills is a lot of fun. I don't know that it would work all the time, but we're in the heat in the summer like this. It works great. Let's do it again. Time to let this little guy back with his friends. Thank you, Bluegill, for the awesome fight. And here he goes. All right, let's go help River out. How'd you do this, by the way? There you go. I didn't do nothing. You didn't do nothing? River! There you go. I 
Oh, go. All right, guys, we're gonna try to catch one more on the dry fly, but I think two is good enough proof that this works pretty well. We're gonna flip under here one more time, then we're gonna switch to wet flies, and let's see what happens. Is it gonna be better? I don't think it's gonna beat the dry fly right now. And also, I've noticed a lot of bug activity on the top of the water, so that probably helps fly fishing. They call it matching the hatch, which is trying to replicate what's going on on the water. This is so awesome. I love watching them. I love watching them just come off the water like that and take it. There we go. Wait, wait, you that. caught one. At least. You caught one. A lot of little guys today. No, no, the sheep. Uh oh. We gotta um, go. We gotta go, guys. So, this is my strike indicator. Normally we'd be using a rubber one, but this is what I have. It's basically a corky. I call it a strike indicator on a budget. And then this is what we're gonna be using. As our nymph or AKA our wet fly. And that's gonna sink down underwater. And then we're gonna be relying on that little bobber to see if we get a bite right by this log. Nice thing about this is you can fish deeper and you can change the depth if you'd like. So now what we do is we just watch that orange bobber out there. The thing I can see being a problem about bluegill is they're such quick biters. They might bite this out and spit it before we even see them hit it. I think we should move over to the other side. What do you think, Abel? Yeah. We just switched right into the shade. I think this could be a good spot for this setup. That one's just grazing on Should green. I just have one take it. But you cannot. Oh, there it was. I saw it on the strike indicator. Oh, wow. What is this? What is this? Oh, it's a King Daddy bluegill. Oh, my God. Oh it's a King God. Daddy. Oh, my God. Oh, ho, Look ho. At that. Holy. That's a hog right there. That is a hog right there. Oh. Nice. Right in the corner of the mouth on the wet I, fly. I, I saw the indicator <coughs> on that one. Sweet, man. <coughs> Watch this guy, he's gonna pee all over you guys. <laughs> Ready? Here we go. There he went. All right. Jeez, you made him pee on me, Morgan. Beds. Get them. They're spinning too quickly. We're gonna give it a couple more minutes here, see if we can get a hit. If not, I think the dry fly is the clear winner on these hot summer days. Oh, I just had a hit. There's one. You know what? You can catch them either way. <laughs> you caught two and two. Three in the first one. Oh, yeah. Look at that. Right in the mouth. So awesome. So cool. We can catch them right in the left. All right, now take this and catch a fish. Think we're done or? No, let's see if he can catch one on the fly. River's on. He, as soon as I turned the camera off, he got a bite. Good job, Riv. There you go, man. You can catch him on a fly rod too. What do you think about that? River got one. There we have it, guys. You know, I was starting to think the dry fly is better, but you know, at the, at the end of the day, the dry fly is just a little more fun because you get to watch him take it right off the top. But the nice thing about that nymph is you can fish these uh, more sunny spots and you can catch them more midday. So both have their advantages. It's probably worth throwing both in the box and both are super fun. I think they're way more fun than catching them on a worm and bait. Um, adds a whole new challenge to pan fishing, bluegill fishing. And I've even caught bass in the past on a fly rod too. So we might do that next. If you like this video, subscribe, like, drop a comment. Let me know if you wanna see us do bass. And I hope Abel that puts this video up real good and makes it worth watching. Thanks, Abel. You're welcome. I'm going to try to make it good. Thank you, Riv. Yeah. I, I know you had a hard time, but at least we came through, right? <laughs>